In today's lesson, we'll be looking at car insurance. So let's have a read. A car insurance is a financial scheme to protect you in the event of a car accident. In return for paying a regular fee called the premium, the insurance company agrees to pay you a large amount to cover the cost of repair or replacement if you have an accident. Um, top car insurance companies I would say are like NRMA, Amy, and Budget Direct. Okay, so you'll be paying what you call a premium. It could be some amount uh, per month or per fortnight or per quarter maybe. Um, and that will help you protect you in instances where someone crashes your car or you crash someone else's car. So, uh, let's have a look at the three uh, main types of car insurance. The first one is compulsory third-party insurance. Now, this protects vehicle owners and drivers from legal liability for personal injury or death uh, to any other person, including drivers, passengers, cyclists, and other pedestrians. Now, it's very important that this is also called the green slip, and this is a compulsory payment that you have to pay for whenever you own a car. Okay? So, um, this is also because... It's green because uh, of the color of the insurance document and it must be obtained before the vehicle can be registered, like what I said, okay? So if you crash someone's car and you cause injury to them, this will protect you and uh, it will cover, like, you know, the, the medical um, expenses, okay? So, secondly, third-party property insurance. Uh, this is an optional um, payment and it covers damage to other vehicles and property in an accident where you are at fault. So it does not cover damage to your vehicle. So this one here is covering you know, medical expenses. This one here is covering the damage you've done to someone's car. And I would recommend at least having this because if you crash someone's car and let's just say it was a very expensive car, then you have to pay a huge amount. Whereas if you had this insurance, you'll be paying a smaller amount, okay, because the insurance covers you, okay, they use their own money to cover you. Then the third one is comprehensive insurance, this is by far the most expensive and the best one, it is optional but co uh, covers damage to all vehicles and property, including your own, which is really good, so if you have an expensive car, um, having the comprehensive insurance is um, safe, it also protects against theft, attempted theft, accidental loss, fire, vandalism or hail damage to your vehicle, which is very important. So there was a time in Sydney where there was a lot of hail and um, a lot of people would have upgraded to this so that even if hail hits their car, they could um, uh, access a claim, okay? And they would be able to repair their car at reduced costs, okay? All right, example one. Uh, Mia bought a second-hand utility vehicle, which is a ute, which is what these two dogs are sitting on. Uh, for her farm. Her comprehensive insurance, which basically covers everything, was this much up front or this much per month. How much extra would Mia pay per year if she chose to pay her insurance per month? Okay, so let's get to the maths. If she pays per month, uh, then she would have to pay off 61.75 times 12, which is basically $741. So let's compare these two amounts, $741 and $631.08 up front. The difference, okay, or extra paid will be how much the $741 is compared to the $631.08. And that will be a difference of 109.92. Okay, so when you're going for insurance, just have a look at the policies and have a look at the payments. Um, sometimes paying up front is much better than paying monthly. Moving on. A lot more theory here. So, uh, insurance premiums and discounts. A motor vehicle insurance premium depends on the factors such as vehicle type, driver age, and driver record, where and how your vehicle is stored, okay, so say for example a garage, driveway, and street parking, and whether the vehicle is financed or fully paid off. Now, all of these things here will cause your premium to go higher or lower. So let's say, for example, if you're, if you're having a vehicle that is uh, prone to having a lot of crashes, okay, let's say a sports car because people drive very fast, then the premium will be higher. If you're younger, because um, all the people who uh, have a higher statistical rate of crashing are younger, then your premium might be higher. 
your driving records. So if you crashed before, your premium will be higher. So avoid crashing or avoid suspending your license. Um, where and how your vehicle is stored. So if you live in an area that has a lot of theft rates, then your premium will be higher. And where you put the car so that it's safer. Now the safest place will be your garage because it won't be accessible with any, by anyone uh, compared to a driveway, street parking. This will be better than these two. And so you get a cheaper premium, okay? Now, some insurance companies give a loyalty discount if you have been with them for several years, and that's good. Uh, however, sometimes, even if the loyalty discount, I find that, with, let's say, for example, NRMA, um, they might be the main company that have a lot of customers, and they do provide loyalty discounts, but they are way more expensive than Budget Direct, okay, which doesn't provide a loyalty discount and gives a cheaper price. Okay, it's like saying... Um, you're buying them for the brand, all right? A multi-policy discount can be offered uh, for having more than one type of insurance policy with them, so you're spending more money with that company. And a no-claim discount, meaning you haven't crashed and you haven't made a claim um, to pay an excess fee for crashing someone else's car, and that's a good thing. But if you have an accident and it's your fault, an assessor will view the damage and assess the cost involved. You'll be asked to complete a claim form and pay an excess. So that is um, some money up front before the company pays the rest. So the excess is stated in your policy document and some customers agree to pay a large excess in return for a cheaper policy, which is nice. Okay, so I'll give an example. Um, my excess is around $1,000. So if I crashed a Mercedes or something like that, and the person told me to pay $4,000 to pay their, for their front bumper, I don't have to pay that, I just pay $1,000 to um, my insurance, and the rest of it, which is $3,000, will be covered by them. Okay, so that's a good thing. Um, let's have a look at example two. So this table shows five examples of comprehensive car insurance premiums. So there's a variety of, you know, genders here, um, ages here, town where the vehicle's garaged, car make, which is the brand, um, year that it's produced, and it's premium, which is the price. So we're calculating, first of all, for part A, the female, uh, a premium for the female uh, from Bathurst who gets a 10% loyalty discount. So if it's 10% loyalty dis discount, then that means that we're only paying, or she's only paying, 90% of it. Okay, because she gets a discount. So let's find that out. She's a female from Bathurst, okay, and that's right here. Okay, and she has to pay $432 normally, but because of that discount, she pays $432 times 90% instead, and that will give um, $388.80. So she pays a bit cheaper. So question B. A 55-year-old Ford driver who pays a 5% surcharge for an older car. So, uh, we're basically looking at the Ford driver, which is this person. Okay, so he's a male driver. And he pays a $508 normally, but because he's paying that 5% surcharge, well, you've got to add that on top of the original 100%, and he's paying 105%, basically, then. So, we're going to get 508 times 105% due to that surcharge, and that will give us a total of 533.40 cents. So it's just about $25 extra. So what can we learn from that? Um, sometimes it might be cheaper to have a cheaper car or an older car, but you might be experiencing a surcharge because older cars are not safer than the newer cars. Question C, the owner of a Mitsubishi uh, vehicle who pays 30% levy as a car is finance. So finance meaning that they haven't paid it off, they're still paying a monthly account, they, um, they're in debt still. So that 30% levy there is for the Mitsubishi owner, that's there, and this person pays 1,339. So we'll get that amount there, write it down, but because you're paying a 30% levy, you're adding that on top of the 100% that you pay. 
which is 1,039. So I'm multiplying that by 130% to add 30% on, on top of it, and that will now get us 1513.07. That's quite expensive. Part D. The driver, um, the Mazda driver from Wollongong, who gets a discount of 2.5% for a good driving record, as well as a further discount of 1.7% for loyalty. So, there's two things we've got to do here. If you get a discount of 2.5%, uh, well, that means from the original 100%, we would minus this amount, and that will get us 97.5% of a left, and that becomes our new price, whatever that is. Right? So, um, then whatever the new price is, okay, let's just say that new price is now 100% again, okay, that price is receiving a further discount of 1.7%. So out of that price, whatever this gives us, let's reset it to 100%, we'll minus 1.7% and that will get us 98.3%. So we have to multiply this amount um, that the Mazda driver will pay off, which is 657. We get that amount and we're going to multiply it by these two numbers. So 657 times 97.5% and we'll multiply it by a further 98.3% and that would equal to 629.685 etc. So that rounds off to approximately $629.69. Okay? Now, moving on to the next part. Theft and accident statistics. So, um, you know that around the world people would um, be thieves and steal cars um, if possible and that would affect insurance, right? Now the thing is, out of this paragraph, the most important thing is a car is stolen in Australia almost every 10 minutes. Okay, that's an important statistic to know and that's overall in Australia and it may not apply to your suburb, uh, but just keep that in mind. So, in example three, the percentage probabilities for vehicle theft and recovery in five states and territories each year are shown in the table. Which state or territory has the highest rate of vehicle theft? Well, if you have a look at the percentage here, this has the highest. So it's Northern Territory, which has the highest um, percentage of theft. Now for question B, if there are 157,700 cars in Tasmania, how many are expected to be sold in each year? So, uh, we're looking at Tasmania, which is this, okay? Now, the chance of theft um, is 0.26%, so all we gotta do for this question is we're gonna multiply 0.26% of the total number of cars in Tasmania, and that will get us 410.02, but you know that cars can't be like 0.02 of them, so you have to round it off to the nearest whole number, and there'll be 410. Whereas in part C now, if 7,489 vehicles were recovered in Victoria, how many were stolen in Victoria? Well, if we have a look at Victoria here, the chance of recovery is 67%. So that's 67% of cars which were recovered okay, after being stolen, represent the 7489. So we're going to say 67% of the cars represent 7489. Now, if we simply get 1% of it, just simply by dividing both sides by 67, we'll get 1% of it. But our goal here is to get 100%, which is all the cars in Victoria. So by multiplying this number here by 100, okay, uh, 7489 over 67 times 100, we will get approximately 11,177.611. And again, random it off to the nearest whole number, be 11178 vehicles. So that's the total number of vehicles uh, that were stolen in Victoria. Now, part two. How many vehicles were there in Victoria originally? 
So this is asking us how many vehicles in total. Okay, not not stolen or stolen. We're, we're counting both of them. Okay, so we have just got the fact that this number of vehicles, one 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 seven eight, represents zero point two four percent of the vehicles stolen in Victoria. So we say zero point two four percent of uh, vehicles in Victoria uh, is equal to one one seven eight. Now we divide both sides by that percentage just so that we can achieve what 1% is. So 1% is equal to, uh, ooh, oh sorry, that should be a 11,178. Um, that number divided by 0 0.24, okay? Okay, now that would give me some number, I don't know what that is, but I'm gonna write that down again. But remember our goal is to get a hundred percent of them. So you want all the cars in the Victoria. So we're just going to multiply both sides here by a hundred, and that will get us exactly four million six hundred fifty-seven thousand and five hundred vehicles in Victoria. And that's how you do that question.